back to the Business of Apps tutorial series. And in this latest tutorial, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking about how you can write yourself a great app store description to help make your app stand out from the crowd. And in particular, there's three things that we're going to be mostly looking at within this tutorial. The first thing that we're going to be doing is explaining how exactly your app store description fits in with your overall app store landing page. We're going to give you the top tips on how to produce yourself that great description. And we're going to show you some examples so you can understand how the best end up doing it. Um, in terms of your tutor, I'm George Osborne. Uh, I'm the Chief Content Officer of the Business of Apps, works as Head of Editorial Content for MagicSolver.com, launching a couple of a couple of apps, to say the least. And I'm also working as events editor for Game Biz, and I run my own mobile focus blogs at mobilemavericks.eu. And the first thing that we're going to be looking at today, we're going to be looking at why these app store descriptions matter. And in terms of why they matter, what you need to be thinking about is how they look on the screen and what part they play in the role when the user finds and lands on an app store page. I mean, as you can see here, this is on the iPad. If you look at basically looking up for, say, Word Monsters by Rovio Stars, you can see that the app icon and the screenshots are incredibly prominent, but the description it's somewhat hidden. Now there's more below the line, you can go on and read more, but essentially you have this one line that really acts to help sell the app. So in terms of when you're thinking about how an app store description fits into your overall app store marketing mix, it's quite clear that the description is not necessarily the top thing that people are gonna look for. But if you think about it in another way, when people have looked at the icon and the screenshots, if they've still not made a decision on whether they're gonna download or not, you know, they've not made a decision to say they will download or they've not clicked off the page, the next place they're going to end up logically looking is your description and the people who might be going there, they're likely to be people who are uncertain, who are wanting their mind to be made up for them, or they're going to be people who are perhaps more critical than your average user, someone who's actually going out with a deliberate aim of trying to actually find something they really, really want. So your app store description is a really great opportunity to help convince those consumers who might be a little bit more uncertain or might be a little bit more demanding, in fact, than those who simply use the app icon on the screenshots to make a decision. And as a result of that, you've got to make sure that there's a certain sense of quality to it. And I think there's three major tips that you really need to be thinking about when you're actually creating your app store description. The first thing you need to be doing is you need to be mastering that first line. As you saw in the previous page, that first line might be everything that the user is going to see. It might be the only thing that they end up seeing. And if you've not got that good first line, then not everyone isn't necessarily going to click through and some people will just simply use that line alone to make the decision. So you need to make sure that one really counts. But beyond that, what you need to do is you need to keep a good branded tone throughout. You need to make sure that people are really aware of what you're trying to get through with things and what you're trying to do and, and why perhaps that particular app is going to shine in their mind. And ultimately you need to inform, people need to know what they're going out and downloading in this age where governments are increasingly looking at in-app purchase regulations, when people are increasingly getting concerned about what mobile app permissions may or may not have, having the information that helps people to make an informed decision like in any other consumer market is gonna help out. Now here on this page, I've pulled out basically a few of the things from, this is from Candy Crush Saga's description. I've managed to pull out a few little things that I think really highlight it, but we're gonna go on and I think have a, a bit more of a closer look at these in depth. At these, each of these points in a bit more depth with a few other apps to refer to. So continuing this theme, like mastering the first line, what you need to think about this first line is that this is the thing that's gonna ensnare people. This is the thing that if people only see one line of your app, you need to be able to make sure that when those people read that line, they understand what your app does, they understand what message you're trying to get across. And ultimately, they just really understand why they should go about downloading it. And the three examples I've picked out here, I think are good contrasting examples of what people might be aiming to do. So Candy Crush Saga, switch and match your way through hundreds of levels in this delicious puzzle adventure. Isn't it the sweetest game ever? Question mark. Well, you see, you can see that. They go with that playful tone. It's a game. It's a free-to-play game. It's going to be something that people are going to be playing a little bit in their spare time. And it's going to be something that they basically want to enjoy. It's not going to be something that they're going to be torturing themselves with, though. In fairness, some Candy Crush Saga players definitely do that. But the aim is that they're trying to bring in those casual users. And a line like that, I think, really helps capture the spirit of the game and also gets that little bit of branded tone across nice and early. So isn't it the sweetest game ever? You know, you've got that little pun, which I think is a very nice little piece of writing. It's something you need to be considering. Like if you're getting your tone across and you're trying to get a branded tone into your app, then you've got to be thinking that if you can get it into that first line, then you can really start selling the strength of your app. And then below that, we've got Paper by 53 Studios. Now, Paper is more of a creative app, so, you know, whereas Candy Crush Saga is a game where you might have different strategies, perhaps, and but that's about the level of where creativity is going to get. Paper is, it's a sketch app, 
and its aim is to basically be one of the best sketch apps on the store. And what it does is that it appeals to the artistic. Its paper is where ideas begin. And the most beautiful way to create on an iPad. It's really making that firm aim to become this class experience that people are wanting to use. So capturing sketches, diagrams, illustrations, they're trying to appeal to a broad set of people who might well be considering using an iPad and particularly, particularly making sure that they're using their tablet as a way of creating things, to be able to create these little drawings that they might need or the diagrams or, or whatever. And what they try and do in this first line, and it's important to note that this entire paragraph is the first line, it doesn't truncate, which is quite an achievement in itself. They basically go for the sort of the big idea, which is this is where ideas begin. They go for the fact that it's beautiful, great way to create. They then appeal to as many people as possible by saying here are the different uses. And then it goes for try it for free, buy additional tools. It's a really smart way. It, it manages to capture all the bases. And even though this is one line, strictly speaking, it manages to capture all of those. And then lastly, we've got Facebook. And Facebook, I, I'd say that Facebook is arguably the most boring out of the three of these. Keeping up with friends is faster than ever. See what friends are up to. Share updates, photos and videos. It, it's functional, but it works. And I think with Facebook, what you've got to be appreciating is that people know what they want to use Facebook for. People, Facebook is so ubiquitous. It doesn't need to sell as heavily as paper by 53 Studios. Candy Crush Saga doesn't need to sell as heavily as other games, but you know it still needs to try and capture that sense of fun and imagination. Whereas Facebook, it's just a case of how can I keep up with people? How can I do it faster? And so you can see there are three different strategies, but all of them are basically taking on this idea that this first line is where you can make some real impact on the users. But at the same time, people are going to go beyond that first line. People are going to read on. And so what you need to be doing is you need to be thinking about keeping a branded tone. So I'm going to continue using a couple of the examples that I've already picked out because I think the reason why it is is just they managed to keep this going. So Candy Crush Saga, join Tiffy and Mr. Toffee in their epic adventure through a world full of candy. Pass level 50 to unlock a dream world and escape reality alongside an owl named Odus. Take on this deliciously sweet saga alone or play with friends to see who can get the highest score. It's still informative, it's still informing people about what you can get, the content you can get, what you can do. Can you play it by yourself? Can you play it with friends, etc., etc. But just a little bit of Tiffy and Mr. Toffee, an epic adventure, a sweet saga. It's creating this sense of fun. It's creating this sense, importantly, of narrative as well that you can continue to play and there's something you can journey and progress through. And when people are looking for a game, they're looking for something that's going to keep them engrossed, perhaps, and something that's going to offer them depth and longevity and something to enjoy. And I think Candy Crush Saga uses a branded tone to bring the more intangible things that gamers like, such as you know, these extended play sessions, extra content, they bring it to life in a way that would appeal far more suitably to a casual audience. And so in this instance, using a branded tone from their app store description is a really smart way of basically capturing the minds of the people who might not necessarily be outright gamers, who are not necessarily going to be looking at Kenji Chris Saga, but to capture the interest of people who might well just be looking for something casual to play. And I think this is the kind of the fun playfulness that I think is really important. And that, that in this case, the branded tone helps them capture this casual market. On the other hand, Paper by 53 Studios, it's appealing to the inner creative. And it talks about things like no fussy buttons, settings, or other distractions. It talks about simplicity. And the idea is that basically, as I think they're, they're quite right to do so, that a number of creatives are not necessarily the most computer literate or they're people who are more likely to perhaps go and deviate towards other media, such as you know just writing or, or sketching things down. So by basically grounding it within the language that people are going to be liking, like you know, there's no fuss, it's a familiar notebook or journal, all your ideas with you in one place, you know, creating on the go. I mean, the reason why people have a journal, the reason why people have a notebook and you see writers will have it or the creatives will have it is because they need to be able to make their ideas down and get them in while they've got the opportunity. And so Paper basically decides to go for this sort of very clear, very professional, but very understanding branded tone. And what they managed to do is they managed to communicate and assuage concerns that perhaps someone who might not be say quite so certain about making the transition over to an iPad to my better play a place for taking notes or place you know, taking journal things. It's basically it's they're trying to use the simplicity and use the just generally just the, the confidence of their language to try and draw people in and try and go, it's okay, you can come and use this. And so you've got in both of these descriptions, branded tones are really important. And what they do is they help to catch people's attention. They help to essentially 
bring people in and if you understand what your app is for if you understand the market that you're aiming at if you understand the audience you're aiming at you can create the right kind of message that whether or not it's directly branded or if that branding is aligned to your company or if it's just done for particular products or to serve that particular audience you can use language as a way of convincing people to come and download basically your app and lastly you've just got to write to inform your reader so as i mentioned that basically the new landscape of the industry is becoming it's increasingly regulation focused is what i would say and in the uk for example the office of fair trading have built in a number of um, basic principles for people who are making free-to-play games and using in-app purchases that they have to abide by within their app store descriptions and their app store assets and although that's not going to apply globally it's clear that if you look at court cases in italy and germany and places like that there's a concern that apps do not communicate perhaps enough exactly what the content features and whether or not it actually goes on and tells people what they're getting themselves in for. So there's two examples here, and um, one of them is based on something that I've been looking at already, and the other one is based on something I haven't looked at. But Candy Crush Saga, it's got a literal list of its features. So in, on one hand, it informs people of what's actually within the app. So tasty graphics, easy and fun to play, hundreds of sweet levels, leaderboards, and items to unlock. So in that case, it takes the functional approach of informing users essentially of what is within the app, what the content is, what people should be coming to expect. But on the other hand, you've got Evernote, they've basically got, here's their sort of disclaimer, it's their in-app purchase and it's free to download and use. Evernote Premium has the great features above and is available for an auto-renewing subscription with the options premium monthly for $5, and premium annually for $45 is becoming. Now it's one of those things that someone might say, well, surely one of the things is that you want to get people in through the door and not necessarily let them worry about that, let them get more concerned as they use the app and as they go on. And I can understand that to some extent, but if you look even at Candy Crush Saga, if you look within the rest of the description, they do mention the fact that if you go back, if you go back to when I was talking about the other one, you can see that they mention when I was looking at the overall app store description, they mentioned there's in-app purchases, they mentioned that it's going to cost extra money, they mention all of these things. It's because consumers are getting out of the phase where they're just easily duped by apps. They're starting to get to the point where they're starting to assert their rights, they're starting to want to be able to make informed decisions. Informed consumers are a good thing. Right? If a consumer's informed and they're happy and they're willing to purchase, then chances are that in the long run, they're going to continue to be willing to purchase. So I think Evernote's approach of actually just admirably saying, this is what our pricing plan is, it's actually a, 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 a good forward-thinking approach to things. And ultimately, this is it. I mean, when you're thinking about what an app store description is, I like to think about it in the context of, say, an Amazon, Amazon listing. So when you're looking through Amazon, when you're looking about what you're going to go and buy, you might see the picture of something, but you come through, you want to know what the product's about, you want to know it's well-reviewed, of course, but you also want to know what it does, what its features are, whether it sounds good. So however much of a good marketing spiel you've got, however much you've got that branded tone and that first line captures your app in, say, the essence of a single sentence, which is ultimately what your first line should be doing, your ultimate principle has to be that you have to inform your readers of what your app is all about. If you don't do that, you do run the risk of people not wanting to click because they're not necessarily sure of what they're wanting or people downloading the app becoming disappointed and leaving a bad review. Whereas I think if you're upfront and you're honest and you're approachable about things and you give people the information to make, sure, there might be fewer people who come in casually, there might be fewer people who just sort of randomly click on the app, but those who do come in through the description, those who look at it are more likely to be those engaged consumers that you actually want. It's all well and good trying to appeal to a very mass market and I think one of the things within the app industry is that people believe that because the market is born globally that you should do that but I still think that the old principles rely on knowing your audience, of knowing how to appeal to them and those are the kind of things that people should be looking at. And so that's, that's really it for your app store description. I mean, that's all we've got for now. Um, just as a quick final summary, I guess, as an app store description, you should be making sure that first line is really tipped up. You should be making sure that your description has a nice branded tone to help it draw the right people in. And you should be making sure that it basically informs people of what the app is actually about so that they can make an informed decision about whether this is the right app for them and go on to enjoy it. If you've got any more questions, though, about this thing, then get in touch with us at hello at businessfapps.com or at Business of Apps, or go and check out our website, businessfapps.com. We've got a number of courses, webinars, and we've got blog posts going up, which will help inform you a bit more about these kind of things as part of our continued efforts to try and teach you about the app, mobile app landscape but that's it for now and uh, thank you very much for joining us